right, I never do this, but uh, I happen to be recording, and here's my actual reaction when I first plugged in this monitor. For the past year or so, I've been trying out different portable monitors to use with my MacBook Pro. So when I plugged this one in, I was expecting it to work, to do its job, but at this point, let's just say I'm gonna spill the beans because I really, really liked this monitor and I was really surprised by how good it was, if you couldn't tell from my reaction. And it's actually been in my bag for over a month and a half. I even took it on a vacation with me recently. Sitting at the desk, having my MacBook Pro screen next to this one, I can't tell the difference between the brightness or the pixelation. But having such a nice panel comes at a price. And I don't mean dollars, more on that in a bit. Okay, okay, enough gushing. Even though this monitor was sent to me by Intel, the sponsor of this video, I wouldn't hold back on what I found out about this monitor, the good and the bad. So I'm gonna be talking about all that stuff. Now the box contains a user manual, a quick startup guide, three cables, two of them USB-C to USB-C, and one mini HDMI to HDMI. Three L-shaped cable adapters, nice little attention to detail there, and a power adapter. There's also a magnetic smart cover that doubles as a stand for the monitor. Oh, and uh, the monitor, of course, no biggie. First thing that immediately fascinated me is when I started adjusting the brightness on this monitor. And to my surprise, it just kept going and going. In fact, at 500 nits, it's brighter than most laptops, which are typically around two to 400 nits. This thing could probably double as a portable sun during those late night coding sessions. Yes, I'm one of those freaky developers that still use the default light theme in Visual Studio, but the default dark theme in VS Code. You can write your complaints down below in the comments. So now that the brightness is covered, that's the most important thing to me. What else do I look for in a portable monitor? Well, for portability, weight is a really big concern. I already carry around a 16 inch MacBook Pro with me all day long in my bag. I don't want a really heavy monitor to drag around too. This one comes in at 1.1 pounds and that's just under 500 grams for the rest of the world. And that's extremely light. For comparison, here's how much my iPad Pro weighs. It's made out of aluminum and it's also very thin, so it slides neatly into my bag right next to my laptop. I've been traveling with this monitor for a month or so and my back is not complaining. I also value something that's just plug and play without installations. And as soon as I plug this in, it recognized it as an external monitor and it just works. The only quirk is you gotta make sure you plug it into the right USB-C port since the labels are on the back and you can't see it when it's standing up. Took me a few times to get used to that. Also, usually I wanna see how reflective the screen is. This can be an issue outdoors, but because this screen is so bright, that's not a huge issue here. But when sitting in a dim room with a window behind you, it's as reflective as a MacBook Pro screen. Now, I'm not too big on extra features. I just needed to display what I'm throwing at it. That's it, but I'm a simple guy. For those that need a little bit more in their portable display, this monitor has USB-C and HDMI, but keep in mind, there is no display port. So if you're devoted to display port, you might feel a tad left out here. It also has a headphone output for those machines that don't have a dedicated headphone output. My MacBook Pro does, so I don't have a problem with that. Now, being a TFT panel, this is brighter and has better clarity than regular IPS screens. And the 13-inch model that I have is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is just over 4K. And this had just a tad bit to do with the biggest con. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Now, among other features, I've played around with the colors here, and I got it to match pretty much exactly to what my MacBook Pro looks like. So you have a lot of options as far as configurations. But if you're programming and you're using dark mode, does it really matter? Maybe if you're watching movies on it, then it's a big deal. You want your colors to come through accurately. But if I'm gonna be doing photo editing, I'm gonna be doing it on my main screen, not on the side screen. All right, all right, now it's time to dish out the dirt. No product is perfect and we're here to do the nitty gritty. Here are the cons of this monitor. If you leave it at default, brightness actually resets after you shut it down, which is kind of annoying. But there is a workaround that I found and I haven't had this problem since. There is something called an eco option. You can set it for things like text, movie, etc. I set it to movie and whenever I restart my monitor, the brightness is at 100%, so we're good to go. Now, one of its strengths is that it's really light, but this could also be a weakness. You have to treat this thing like a baby. Wrap it in a little blanket and be very careful with it if you want it to last. It's light and thin. If you bend it, it's probably gonna crack. I didn't try it, okay? But it probably will. 
Don't sit on it. Don't do it. Not worth it. Now, the refresh rate is 60 hertz and it doesn't get higher. Productivity and for coding, this is fine. But for gaming, maybe not so much. I mostly use it for programming and video editing and it works out for me just fine. The cables that come with it are fine. They'll do the trick. They're not as robust as this expensive, dedicated Thunderbolt 4 cable here. But honestly, I've been plugging this monitor in and I haven't had a problem with it. This is also where those L-shaped adapters will come in handy. You can call them L-shaped, you can call them 90 degree adapters. They're in the box, so it really helps out with guiding those cables when you're sitting uh, at Starbucks like I do, being a weirdo. The included stand is just okay. Nothing amazing. It's not really a con or a pro. I don't know why I put it under cons, but it works. And the nice thing about this kind of stand is it doubles as a case for it and it's very easy to fold up. I've dealt with some other monitors that are portable that are not so easy to fold up. This one just flops over and it's done. Another con is if you wanna mount this a little bit more permanently, there is no visa mount option. So you're out of luck there unless you hack something together yourself. But the back of this is metal. So I bought a magnetic stand to try it out, uh, but the stand wouldn't hold this monitor. I think it's probably the stand's fault. I returned that stand, it was pretty bad. $70 stand, it was really expensive and turned out to be useless. A little bit disappointing, but I did get another stand for it, which worked out pretty well. It's just more of a leaning stand. And what the stand does is it just gets the monitor off the table. So if you have a smaller table, this works out pretty well. Now, let's talk about the biggest con that I found, and that's the battery drain. Because this thing is 4K and it gets so bright, the 22 hours that the MacBook Pro is supposed to last came down to just four hours using this monitor plugged in. Yeah, keep that charger handy. So do I recommend this display panel? And here's what I think. I think this video is sponsored by Intel, so thank you for that. And anything I say should be taken with a grain of salt. However, since this monitor hasn't left my bag and I don't see it leaving my bag, until something better comes along, which I haven't seen yet, I think it's pretty safe that I can actually recommend it to you folks. It's actually the best portable display that I've seen and tested, and I've only had this one for just about two months. So we'll see how this thing does. I am gonna keep it, and I'm gonna test it again in a year. Maybe I'll do a comparison video of all the different monitors that I've collected and tested. Let me know if you wanna see that, by the way. Now, I like the 4K option for this monitor because I usually don't work for more than three to four hours anyway in a stretch. At that point, I will recharge the laptop if I need to go longer or have it plugged in anyway. However, if you work mostly unplugged, watch out. You might want to get just uh, an HD version instead or just keep the brightness down. I also would prefer a larger screen, but uh, the same concerns about battery usage goes for a larger screen too, just even more so, since a bigger screen will suck up even more juice. And they only sent me the 13-inch version. However, there is a 15-inch version, which I'll link down below too. Is this thing worth the money? Yes absolutely it's actually not very expensive considering all the monitor options that are out there sure there's cheaper options and some of those you want to stay away from i've seen monitors much more expensive than this one too and this one does what it's supposed to do really well you can grab one for yourself using the link in the description let me know if this was helpful to you give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more videos like this consider subscribing to the channel and i will see you again very soon